Hi, my name is Paul Maddox. Uh, I'm here at NAM 2015. This is my first time to NAM and my first time as an exhibitor, which is really great. Um, I'm here with the 002 synthesizer. Uh, so I'll give you a quick run through of what we got. We've got uh, two digital oscillators. Each oscillator has 56 waveforms and we've got pulse width. So you can change the waveforms and you see lots of pretty pictures on the screen there. There you go. So you can see all the waveforms changing so you can see what it is you're playing with. We've got a, a mixer, each oscillator has two oscillators of course, but we've also got a sub oscillator for each oscillator. We've got an external audio input as well, so you can bring the external audio in. We've got a classic transistor ladder filter, but what we've done is we've bent it a little bit. So we can bring in here, we've got a four pole mode. We can sweep that through to a band pass mode. We'll carry on sweeping it through to a one pole low pass. So you can have the big, big sort of memory moogie type sounds at that end. You've got your modern band passes. And at this end, it's got a very bright, fizzy, almost O behind me sound to the filter. So it's a very flexible, powerful filter. We've got two LFOs. This one's global and this one's per voice. So we can put these into single shot modes to give us effectively a third envelope. Or we can do delays on the LFO, the usual sort of things you can do with really good LFOs. We've got two modulation matrices. So you can, you've got six sources, each source has eight destinations. So I can have, for example, uh, LFO here, I've got routed to wave, I can route the velocity to the slope and the drive, I can route the note to the resonance. Uh, yeah, so it makes it quite easy to edit and quite quick. But the screen is context sensitive, so whenever you change something, like the filter cut off, the screen jumps to it. If I change the drive, the filter jumps there. So it, it's tried to make it really visually impacting and useful to use and easy to program. We've also got in here, uh, it's 12 part multi-timbral. We've got a 12 track sequencer. Each sequencer has got 12 rows and 32 steps. A row can be a note, so you could have 12 rows, of, 12 rows of notes playing, or you could have a couple of notes and a couple of parameters on the synthesizer. We also have an interesting feature called the animator, which is much like a step sequencer, but for parameters, and it's triggered when you press a note rather than when you press start or stop. And all of these things are synced to MIDI. So we can do quite a lot of things with that. One of the other key features and the thing that sets our synthesizer apart from anybody else by a long way is we've got a, an internet connection. On the back there's a, a connection for your router, you plug your ethernet cable in. And when you want to do an update, you don't have to update big sysx files or custom USB drivers. You simply push the button there for the, con for the settings, push update, and then you can hey, go and fetch the latest version, it downloads it, installs it, and reboots your synthesizer. Much like your iPhone, your tablet, your PC, everything else has been doing for a number of years. What's really exciting about this is we're adding the ability to share patches across the internet. So if you've got a, a business contact in your phone, if you want to give me your, uh, a contact, you give me a single contact as a V-card. You don't give me your entire address book. Currently with other synthesizers, when you, if I want to share a sound, I have to give you a SysX dump of my whole bank of sounds, or if not the whole memory. As a sound designer, that means I'm giving away a lot of intellectual property. So what I can do is I can share just one sound with another user, and I can control what rights that user has to that sound. So he can edit it, or he can not edit it, he can copy it, or he can not copy it. So again, as a sound designer, I'm retaining control of my work. That's probably the main features we've got in here, obviously sequencer, animator. We've also got a bunch of quick recalls, which I should mention. I was a performing musician and you've had pieces of paper on stage with the track names and the sounds you need and your lights dim and the fan comes on and the paper blows off and you can't find what you're doing. So much like your old radio, you can load a patch up and say, oh, hold the button down for five seconds and then it'll load the patch. So you press nine, it loads that sound, I press 12, it loads that sound. That can be a performance, it can be a single sound, it can be a sequence, and we've got a uh, hundred banks of 12 sets of those. I also forgot to mention we've got 10,000 patches in here, we've got 10,000 sequences and 10,000 animations as well. So there's plenty of room for scope and sound and I hopefully nobody will ever run out of memory.